right, everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel. If you guys are new here uh, with the Garmin stuff, my name is Brian Andrake. I run a Kansas Angling Experience Guide Service out of the northeast part of Kansas here, as well as Garmin Brand Ambassador. Been with Garmin for about four years now, and I'd like to think that I know my way around these units pretty well. So uh, today we are going to go over the finer points of live scope. We are going to wipe my live scope unit clean, restore factory defaults, and basically start from scratch. So this video is going to be beneficial for you guys if you're just getting into live scope and you need good baseline settings or if you've had live scope for a while and you just need a couple more tips and tricks so i'm gonna get the live scope screen recording here so you guys can go through with me uh, step by step i'm going to show you what each setting means uh, what each setting does how it manipulates everything and so on and so forth all right well you guys can see here we've got the live scope screen recording it's always really nice to do these in a uh, target rich environment so right now we're sitting over a big brush pile on the edge of a channel break with a bunch of crappie sitting on i just got done fishing these fish uh, so i thought it'd be a good opportunity to do this video uh, give a little bit of a refresher course on live scope if you guys are new to the channel please go check out my garmin live scope playlist uh, i've done tons and tons of tutorials from down imaging side imaging getting to know your units a little bit better but today we're just going to focus on live scope so right now i'm going to hit the options button we're going to go to sonar setup installation and then restore sonar default so as good as my screen looks right now it is going to go all the way back to as if you were start powering this unit on for the very first time so we'll hit yes there it says it's changed to down but it's going to auto correct that to forward i always run mine in forward mode everything is on auto right now so i always do recommend uh, not running your graph on auto i mean the auto settings will do you just fine but there's so many little fine points to live scope where you can refine your screen so i guess the first thing that i should mention i am running it like you can see in the bottom left hand corner there i'm running the lvs 34 transducer i've got that transducer on a c light pole mounted independently on the uh, track system on my Lund here. I run two live scopes. I've got one in the front and one in the back. I run the LVS 32 in the back of the boat. The 34 is on the front and that's just because I'm a full-time fishing guide. It's always nice to have uh, the people on the back of the boat on live scope, but the uh, independent pole system works much better for me versus having it on the trolling motor. So it's all really gonna come down to how you fish. Now that we can go back to our screen here, the first thing you'll notice where it says auto on the left side with the plus and minus, that's gonna be your forward range. So you can see as I hit the minus button, that's gonna bring things into perspective a little bit, especially when you're fishing vertical. I like to go between 25 and 30 feet when I'm fishing vertical, but obviously if I'm casting to fish, I wanna extend that back out. So I always recommend just manually setting that as well. So then we'll go over to the right side of the screen with the other auto and plus and minus button. That is your depth range. Always recommend setting your depth range about five feet deeper than the depth that you're fishing. You want to get as much screen real estate as possible. So we're sitting at about 26 and a half feet. I've got mine set at 35 and that's just because we've got kind of an awkward angle on the channel break here. So then your next on-screen control there is your gain where it says auto and you can see that uh, going up and down between 68, 66. Again, something I always recommend manually changing. So with gain, obviously, when you bring that up, it's gonna give you a much hotter picture, give you a lot more interference. When you bring that down, it's gonna make things a little bit more clear. So I always recommend running your gain, depending on water clarity, anywhere between 68 and 75%. We've got uh, high skies today. Water's pretty clear. We've probably got three or four vi foot of visibility. So I can crank mine up a little bit, but I run my screen a little bit hotter because I wanna be able to see everything in the water column. I don't want anything filtered out. So I'm gonna leave my gain right there at 73. So that pretty much takes care of your on-screen controls, the ones that are right at your fingertips. Now we're gonna delve into the actual settings. So on my GPS map here, we're gonna hit the options button and that's gonna bring up our first live scope menu. So you can see our first three are the on-screen controls that we've already manually adjusted. Now we're gonna go down to sonar setup and we'll start with appearance. So in the appearance menu, your color scheme, this is all gonna be personal preference. It's gonna depend on the day, if it's sunny or if it's cloudy and just basically what looks best for your eyes. So I always tend to run my color scheme on moss because it makes those targets really pop. You guys can see those crappies perfectly. If we had some baits down there, you'd be able to see the jigs perfectly as well. So I like that one, but they've got tons of different colorways that you can choose from uh, just based on what looks better for you. So we'll leave that on moss, then we'll go back. 
The next option down is color gain. So what color gain is gonna do is make your targets pop even more. So you can see I'm bringing that up and it's making those crappies in that brush a little too blown out. And then we bring that down and it's kind of filtering them out a little bit. So my color gain, I always recommend leaving somewhere between 60 and 80% just based on what you're trying to see. If you're trying to fish a one thirty second or a one sixteenth ounce crappie jig, I would recommend cranking that up because a complaint that I hear from a lot of guys all the time is that I can't see my jig, I can't see my jig. Well, first off, your jig is probably not right in line with your transducer. You may be off to the left or to the right because the live scope beam is very narrow, especially right at the beginning of the, uh, the transducer there. So wanna make sure it's always in front, but if you can't see your jig, it's probably because your color gain is too low. So crank that up between 65 and 70, just kind of depending on what looks good. We'll leave mine at 65 here and then we'll hit done. We gotta get back to the sonar setup menu. So we'll go back to appearance. Down, one down from color gain is color limit. This is an update that came out um, a couple years ago now, which allows you to crank your regular gain way, way, way up. And then when you bring that color limit up, what it's gonna do is filter out a lot of that interference. So you can see as I bring that dial up, it's kinda, we're all the way up to 90 and you can see that's just filtering everything out. It doesn't look super good. But if we go back, and we actually edit our gain, let's say we crank our gain, we'll put that up to like 86%, running super, super hot, go back to sonar setup, and then appearance, color limit, so we bring that down, that's what it would look like at 85 or 90% with your gain cranked all the way up with no color limit, so when you drag that color limit bar up, it's going to filter out a lot of that interference, but to my eyes, I really just don't like using color limits, so I leave mine off and I just adjust my gain manually as I see fit. So we'll bring that down kind of to where we were, about 72, 73, looks perfect. So now let's go back to the sonar setup menu again. Uh, trails, I always leave trails off. Trails are just gonna show you kind of which direction the fish are actually swimming. It's gonna show like a trail back behind them. I pretty much know which way the fish are swimming just by looking at the screen, so I leave my trails off. Bottom fill, that's another setting. Um, you guys can see when I turn that on, it just really shows you exactly where the bottom is. If we were fishing walleyes, some guys find this beneficial to be able to see those fish, those walleyes when they're slithering along the bottom. But again, just kind of makes a little bit too much going on on the screen. So I leave bottom fill off. So from there, that takes care of your appearance menu. We'll go back. Layout is our next option, okay? So the very first option up there is the grid overlay. You guys can see the grid lines on the screen, horizontal and vertical. It just kind of gives you a better size reference on what you're looking at. You can see the numbers at the top are going uh, in two foot increments. So those are two foot squares. So when you're trying to get a size gauge on a fish, you can use those. My eyes personally, I prefer to have it off. So you can just toggle that off. Um, just makes the screen a little less busy. Scroll history, we hide that. On-screen control, we obviously want. Reverse range is a very important setting. So reverse range is gonna show you more or less back behind the boat on the left side of the screen uh, behind zero. So right now, I think it's on default. We will hide that. So we are seeing nothing back behind the boat. We have zero right at the left side of the screen right there. Now we'll go back to minimum, it shows us a little bit, and then if we go to full, it shows us a lot of bit, but at that point you're just shrinking your screen real estate. So I always leave that on minimum because I do like to see a little bit of what's behind me. So that's a very important one right there. So now navigating back to the menu, we're done with the layout. Noise reject, that's a very important one as well. I have mine set on medium, and the reason that I have to uh, set mine on medium is because when I have my second live scope transducer running, uh, they will interfere and you'll see some flashing on the screen. So I need to leave that on medium, but if you turn that off, you can see there's a little bit too much going on. You can kind of get some of that flickering going on. So I always don't recommend leaving that off. Either leave it on low or on medium. If we turn it on high, it's gonna make your screen look really, really, really crispy clear. But the one thing we have to remember about settings on your live scope screen is the more layers you're adding to make your screen clear, the more it's filtering out objects in the water column. So always just remember that when you're trying to have a super clear, crispy clean screen that uh, it's not always about having a super clean screen. You wanna get as much information back 
from the transducer as possible without filtering a lot of that stuff out. So we'll go ahead and change that back to medium. Got a great picture there. Ghost Reject, uh, this was an update again that they came out a couple years ago uh, to try and filter out a lot of the ghost tree if we were in shallow water, especially on hard bottom. You would see a return on the a, a mark on the screen coming up from the bottom that kind of looks like a lay down. I typically leave that off or on auto. It really doesn't make too much of a difference to me because I know what I'm looking at, but if you don't want to see that on your screen, then either go ahead and turn that on low or medium, but we're just going to leave that on auto here for now. So next option down, TVG, another very important uh, option here. TVG, like you guys can see on the screen, stands for Time Varying Gain. So with Time Varying Gain, you're going to be filtering out different parts of the water column from top to bottom um, just based on the depth that you're in. So right now, my TVG is off. When I turn it on low, we lose a lot of that interference towards the top part of the screen. Go to medium, same thing, but you can see as we continue to filter out everything, those crappies, all of your targets are getting a lot less bright so if we turn that on high you're really not seeing as much as you probably should so i recommend all based off of your water clarity if you have super super dirty water that may change if you have super clear water i would just recommend leaving that off and then adjusting your regular game as necessary so that about covers all of the baseline settings that are important on live scope feel free to skip around the video because i know i have a tendency to talk a little bit too quick and run through this stuff too quick but that's why I wanted to record the screen so that you guys could see exactly what I'm doing here and then once we're all finished I will put all my settings uh, that we just went through up on the screen so you can take a screenshot take a picture have some sort of frame of reference when you get out on the lake but from there overlay data this just shows you up in the top left hand corner it's gonna show you your depth your water temp your voltage and your time I have a second graph below my 8616 right here to show me the time I still want as much screen real estate as possible, so I always turn my time of day off, but if you only have one graph up here, I would recommend leaving that on unless you don't care about what time it is. So we'll go back. Installation, there are a few options in the installation uh, menu that I do want to uh, go over. Stabilization, number one. Sometimes you'll find when you put live scope down, your bottom might start doing that on the screen. We see it a lot. So what I always recommend doing is going into that stabilization menu, toggling that auto stabilize off and then back on and then go back. And then what you want to do is go to your focus. When you adjust the focus, it adjusts your bottom. So you can kind of see as I move that up and down, it's going to level out that bottom. It's also going to level out some of the stitching you might see uh, from the transducer, but I always recommend in the meantime just leaving that on auto fresh which means auto fresh water last option there orientation orientation means what orientation your transducer is currently in whether it's forward down or perspective i recommend just leaving that on auto because depending on which way you click your transducer up down or perspective uh, it is going to auto recognize that in the unit and then adjust that for you so leave that guy on auto and then calibrating your compass is also important so uh, in this situation this is more beneficial for guys that may have it on their trolling motor just so you know which direction the transducer is looking without actually having to look at your trolling motor I do not calibrate mine but it is recommended to do it just because on my pole I know exactly which direction it's facing at all times but basically in this situation all you do is just fire up your big motor do about two circles in the same direction and your graph's gonna let you know when it's been calibrated and then from there it's gonna pop a uh, little icon in the right upper right hand part of the screen um, that'll show you kind of like a like a flashlight which direction your transducer is looking so do recommend for first-time users calibrating your compass just so you know where you're looking but from there guys that is honestly it I don't think that I missed anything um, short of again as it pertains to depth always just manually adjust your depth I mean yeah you can put it on auto but if you're fishing uh, some sort of hump or channel break or something you're gonna see that bottom start jumping up and down trying to adjust so either hit the plus or minus button and then same thing right here always manually adjust how far you're looking out there and then the last one gain bump it up for whatever suits uh, your eyeballs 
But other than that, guys, that is pretty much it. Again, real baseline setting. I just wanted to go through and kind of show you what the different options do, because um, a lot of guys know kind of what they mean, but they don't adjust them enough to know what they actually do on the screen. So that's the main reason why I wanted to go over that. But in the end, it all just uh, plays into what suits your eyes better when you're out on the lake. There is no right or wrong answer, but uh, right here on the screen, I will put all the settings that I run uh, so you guys have a foundation. Uh, first time users getting out there or if you just want to refine your settings and kind of play with them see what mine do to your screen if you like them great if not at least you know what they do uh, so that you can adjust them in the future but i suppose in the meantime here since we're sitting over a bunch of fish i'll show you what they look like when we get those baits down there so i really like using braid because you can see the line all the way down to your jigs that crappie was out of his mind and they're just completely missing it but as the boat kind of moves here, we move with it, and there is a fish. There are so many fish in this school, it's not gonna be a big one. But it's always cool when you can see your line all the way down to the fish. You can see your bubble trail, and there goes our fish back down. We'll catch one more for good measure, how about that? There's actually quite a few better looking ones out in front of the school, so just do a short, short little pitch out there like that those baits swing right down to them. Let's see if anybody will oblige. Whoa! Swing and a miss. There's that bubble trail back behind my baits I was talking about. There's another one. He completely whiffed it. Do the old takeaway. We got him. So, all that was to say, I hope you guys found this uh, quick little refresher course on live scope beneficial. If you guys are local, I do uh, I do electronic sessions, Garmin electronic sessions in your boat to help you get stuff dialed in as well. So if you guys are in the Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Nebraska area and you really need some help, come on down. I'll hop in your boat and we'll get you dialed in. So in the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, make sure you check out the rest of the videos in the Garmin Live Scope playlist. Stick around and watch some fishing videos too. So thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.